No one else is here. So just so you know, everybody loves the camera. It's not. And uh, it's just going to be a raw conversation. I believe in non-editing. Human beings buy off people that admit what their mistakes are, what they're good at, what they're not at. People are tired of fake book. I'm sorry, Facebook. You know what I mean? Like, so this is an authentic series of how you grow, okay? All right, so we've known each other. I, want, I know these answers. I'm going to ask you questions so our people can see your journey. You're going to inspire people today. You're going to relate to people today. You're going to help people hit home with, like, how to look at things differently and maybe they're going through some struggles that you had right maybe they're going through some success like you have so just trying to take it back right so take us back where'd you grow up i was born in the bronx new york 1953 i just turned 69 years old the other day i was a great up in the bronx i love that only till i was 10 and then we moved to the ultra suburbs and midwestern part of pennsylvania and Pittsburgh. Where? Uh, Churchill gate, uh, went to Gateway High School, whatever. Explain it. Outside Pittsburgh, how far? I don't know. I was little. Okay. No one had to have that. I went to the University of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And then one day I said, I'm done. Where am I going to go? And I literally moved to Philadelphia, not knowing a soul. So did you graduate then? Yes. So you went to Oakland? Yes. Okay. Where'd you live? Right up from Izzy's. Izzy's? Bakery was uh, the, down. Was the O there where you got the late night French fries? I don't know. <laughs> so there's a place downtown Pittsburgh where you got French fries late and on the French fry bill in a security you charge. See that. In a security charge. <laughs> a security. Maybe not those back security workers. But when I went there, you had security workers. Well, I was there a few generations before you. And that's okay. It's all good. Yeah. Pittsburgh's a good city. What fried fries in Philly? Nothing. I literally I had a choice of I'm not gonna go back to New York. That's too big, too messy, too yeah. crazy, too expensive. Yeah. And I looked at Philadelphia and I said, that was, to me, even though I didn't know it, was the city of neighborhoods. And I like that. I like that close feeling. So I moved to what was then called the Hampton House, okay. which is now Oak Hill Towers. Okay. Um, and then I moved to a little place in Center City called Rittenhouse Square at 21st and Locust. And I thought I would never be able to afford the rent. It was $325. <laughs> I drive past it. It was one of the old Wanamaker um, daughters had been given this building as a wedding gift from her father. It was a very cool building. Uh, That's a nice wedding gift. Yeah, yeah. I try to do that for my daughter, a little row in overbook but that didn't work out so <laughs> so everybody knows pittsburgh compared to philly pittsburgh World is it is like part here part here part here you're going to drive bridges but everywhere bridges that were confusing as heck before ways map quest you were definitely lost like there's no way you're off over a bridge and when you come to philly it's, it's a grid right you guys know from being here it's very easy so if you ever meet a Pittsburgh person from pittsburgh let them know you can actually walk yeah. from neighborhood to neighborhood that's right Tree streets go north and south, um, or east and west. I, I'm very bad at directions, <laughs> which is not great for a real time. I'm a horrible <laughs> address. <laughs> west. Lady at Metro the the tennis court. She goes, I live in Durrell. And I was like, Oh, it's great. It's across the street from me in this neighborhood. She goes, you, Where do you live? I said, Bagel. She goes, No, it's not. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I know it's in the neighborhood. <laughs> no, it's across the street. So I'm with you. So then what happened next? So I got the radio and TV, both production, sales, writing. Everything voices. I used to have a great voice, so I did a lot of stuff on camera, off camera, whatever. Um, Hold on, slow down. So you were on camera. What did you do? TV. Tell us about that. No, That's a it's a job. It was just a job. You in the background, or sometimes. You... Okay. Sometimes. Did you write? Sometimes. What did you do? I did a lot of writing. Okay. I did a lot of producing. I still love to write. What station? Uh, I started out in the longest period of time I was at KYW News Radio, yeah. which was the calling card of all calling cards in radio. Yeah. If you were selling radio or writing for someone, I have I still have a client from those days, and that was before many of you were born. No, no joke. 19, I'll say 80. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was wonderful. It was when you could walk into a team. At the time, they were operated separately, but we were in the same building, where the next door to the board's building in Fourth and Market. Um, 
and we were all friends. You know, radio was on one side, TV by was... WHLY? Not then, no. but sort of. Okay. No, reference my comment, not put it directly. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> it was at a time when you could go from writing to producing to in front of the camera to behind the camera. There was collegiality about it that was wonderful today or became very regimented and separated as years went by, which was when my group started to do it. You know, it was no more fun. Then I got into advertising. I worked with some of the biggest advertising agencies in the company. Kalish and Rice and Spiro and Associates. They were huge in their day and that was 80s. Um, and then I opened up my own advertising agency. So slow go back. What did you sell? Not at the agency, no. no. What did you sell there? What were you, what were you doing there? No, well, so here I was, a great story. Ladies. So I graduated from college, I got a degree, big deal, and I was interviewing to be an account executive with Kalish and Rice against a guy whose name I still remember. And they gave him the job instead of me and put me behind an an IBM Selectric typewriter. I sort of revolted. Back then I was, do you guys, are any of you familiar with the phrase push it broad? <laughs> <laughs> that was what we were called. If you had a voice or an opinion, you were a push it broad. And the more you talked, the, uh, the more attention you got, the more attention or bad attention. So I said to my boss, more rich, that I will give, I will be in this position for six months, that's it. And then I want a promotion, I will prove myself. In that same six months, the guy, I'm, not, I'm trying not to say. Okay, you sold my house. <laughs> got fired for smoking dope in the hall. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I instantly was promoted. Oh boy, what can I do? Yeah, well, there's a, an issue with that, I think. But anyway, it was there for a long time. Spiro stole me away from them. I was writing, I got to produce, I got to do really wonderful stuff. What were you really good at with the gym? Writing, writing, writing. And I was pretty good at producing too. I could put together an event. I used to do lots of events, the same thing I won't do now. That's great, you're like, I'll do some events now. <laughs> and then, uh, where am I? In the 90s. And then I got married. And I married a man who was a widower who had two daughters. And I had, I was the only woman on earth who was really the only example of an immaculate conception. And we married. His, his wife had died a few years prior. We adopted each other's children. And it's 30 plus years later. Well, we, we live in I bought a house in Overbrook okay. uh, with two of my friends. One died, one got married, and I was finding crap files in front of my house. And I had a baby at the time. And so I moved, at, uh, I met Joe. We got married within six months. Boom, married, done. Um, I rented that house for 13 years. Like that. That yeah. I, sold, I bought it for 69.9. So the 13 years later for 69. <laughs> I wasn't a realtor at the time. I remember the event so clearly and like that is never gonna happen to me again. So it didn't. And then where did you and move after that? So I had I opened up an ad agency in my house. I was working, I was still on radio. I was at Shadow Traffic. <clears throat> oh my god. Who said that? <laughs> What is it called? Shadow traffic. Shadow traffic. Yeah, I remember Tell us shadow about traffic. That. Shadow traffic. Yeah, I wrote the jingle for it. I wrote the jingle for it. Let's hear it. No. <laughs> <laughs> shadow ranger. I want to be live on life of danger. I want to fly the skies and ride the road. Walt right. McDonald, Rod Carson, they were all there. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so the Philly Nugget. Shadow crap. I mean, that's so, so it was wonderful. I got to fly on a helicopter for the first time. What happened to it? Merch uh, bought by Metro Traffic. Mer well, there were a lot of mergers at the time. Clear Channel was involved in that merger acquisition, whatever. 
don't care, don't know. Um, and I quit. I was pregnant. I was in my 30s. I was not married. More to it, but we'll be brief. And I said, I'm not going to hide this. I'm very pro choice. Sorry to get political. I made my choice. I had this beautiful baby. And boy, girl. Girl, Elizabeth, she got, just got married a month ago. Love it. Yeah, brilliant. Where's she living at? In the city, in this horrible house that I had nothing to do with. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, bought it a few years before we they met. He's six five in a house that's nine hundred square feet on two stories. <laughs> Sounds tight. Is it a trinity? <laughs> no, two stories. But just um, one room on first, and these. So everyone's well, and all, all that's great. But I opened up. I started my own agency because clients had said to me from the ad, ad and radio and TV days. If you go, then I will come. So I quit my big job. Are you scared? Terrified, but confident. Because what I knew was what I knew. I could write. I can write about anything in my way, stream of consciousness. Yeah. And I'll get you there. I will get you so into that. We're going to ask her a little bit later in real estate of writing. It's, it's so amazing to be able to do that. I've had people call me because of what I've written and said, I don't like what my agent wrote. Can you write me my copy on one condition? <laughs> you know, no, I can't. But <laughs> if you're no longer working with that agent. And I can. So, um, so you're in your own agency. I sold it after another 12 years or so. That's about right. Um, had five employees. Loved Why'd it. Why'd you sell it? Because I didn't want to be on the business side. I was not writing anymore. I was not producing anymore. I was behind a computer and a scanner and, you know, running the business. So just pause for one second for a little gold nugget tip. I come across this a lot where someone's a really good salesperson. They really enjoy what they do. And they come up with this amazing idea because you make so much money out of these things called teams. Mm. You know? Some people do okay, some people don't, but the next thing you know, they have to own a business. Then they have to run the operations, kind of manage the budgets, manage people, right? Yeah. And it, some people it's good for, some people it's not good for, right? Because it takes the fun out of just wanting to sell houses. So keep that in mind. If you ever want to start a team, great. I like teams, but I also like individuals. But that's something a lot of people don't talk about is it takes away from and the that, fun part. So I had a team a few years ago here in real estate in the old Keller Williams office yeah. from which I come. And it was not, I couldn't measure its success on a level that I wanted it to be successful. I had a full-time admin. I brought on a um, an agent at the begging of a client and I thought okay okay it was that was a horrible experience that I learned much from yep you and want to talk about that my admin bit. was not the she was lovely but she couldn't do what I needed to have done yep. right so let's go back to the news agency real estate then so you to your agency ad. ad agency you sold it and then did you get the real estate or what so I took about um, maybe nine months to really look at what was right for me. And real estate was the right fit. I looked at it from an economic, personal, uh, emotional perspective. I had already bought a house by myself without any, you know, I wanted to fire that agent. So you lived in Overbrook and then you moved to where? Habertown, Habertown. where I still am. Woohoo! <laughs> We're still on in the same house. Well, we sold the house here We're just on, the on Strathmore Road down by the P and W. Five hundred block of Strathmore. Um, love it. We just love it there. In the meantime, our family has grown. Our three daughters are now all married. Their names are by me, take me, and give me. We <laughs> 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 make all of that. Um, and uh, one grandchild so far, hoping that the youngest daughter who just got married brings us some more. Boy or girl? All three daughters. But grandkid. Da um, 
uh, Ellie. Four girl. Four girls. Four girls. Four girls. Yeah. Three girls and one great job. Right. Mm -hmm. So now, what, 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 when you got into real estate, did you crush it right away? Did you struggle right away? I was you right away. I was at Prudential, the old Prudential Berkshire Hathaway now, um, for a year and a half, two years. And I kept asking questions that the broker didn't like answering. What office? Hamford <laughs> Home down the street. Or from yeah. Mountain Brimmer right anymore. So, yeah. Uh, I kept asking questions. What about title? What about this? What about that? I want to know. And they didn't like, he didn't like answering my questions. There's that damn pushy broad thing. <laughs> right? And um, Kevin Williams called the former broker and said, come be our team leader. So I was for about two and a half years. Yeah. I was you. Yeah. A little less facial hair there, but just as much as it. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, why'd you get out of it? He didn't get out of it. He got out of it, and that that was a crushing blow. For me. That's hard for me to talk about. In fact, this morning, I bailed. By the way, last week to do this, I couldn't do it. I'm way too humble. I'm still a pushy broad, but privately, ask my husband or my daughter. But I bailed, and I said. I responded to his video, hate the video, <laughs> with an email, and he, I sent it also in, a, in an email, so the video response and the email response. At the bottom, I said, please confirm you got this. I don't want to leave you hanging. He didn't respond. You may have done that strategically. You will pay. <laughs> <laughs> you will pay. So I said, okay, fine. I texted, okay, fine, I'll do it. Because I am who I am. I'm not anything but that. So a lot of times as human beings, we're emotional, right? And we're our biggest we're, yeah, we're our biggest challenge in life, right? We're our biggest obstacle, right? We look in a mirror in the morning, right? We always look at like you pick things out, you look at your house and you look and you're like like this. And then you have a friend where like, dude, your house is beautiful. You know what I mean? Like just humans, right? So I find if you guys ever deal with an emotional situation, anything in life. Let it just sit there for a moment. Let let it let it warm. Let it think. You know, I knew she's perfect. Yeah, perfectly. Like I know she's all star. I know her life. Like her, I've talked right. And then she and I. you and I. You said her and I. It's she and I. Oh, she and I. Well, that's the difference between you and me. Is I can't write and say the wrong words many times. I'm like a third grader. And I am grammatically yeah. correct you in silence. <laughs> <She is. laughs> that's why I'm definitely always sending you a video from now on. I'm never sending it. <laughs> So, anyways, you did it, right? You're going to feel great after, and you're doing great already. It's just a raw conversation, right? And your story is going to inspire people. What do you think? Let's talk about real estate sales, right? So, you're in real estate sales. Crushed by shirt. the loss of the right. Bryn office. Yep. Crushed. And then what happens? Plus COVID, wait. Yep. Then my husband had numerous yep. surgeries, big-time surgeries. All of a sudden, I had to be like a good wife. Mm -hmm. And I've been gliding through it. He's a retired teacher. He cooked every night. He still does when he's back to it. Worst cook in the world. Please do not publish this anymore. <laughs> I don't care if he's cooking. I'm like, yum, yum. This is delicious, man. And I gave 30 pounds, I'm sure, from it. But it took, I had to readjust. Um, COVID was impossible. Uh, just the whole mentality. I have a lot of people who died in my family and my friends. That was crushing. Um, and so, and that's the end of my story. <laughs> so, so, so then, take us a little bit forward. I, I then, then you, then how do we connect? Then how we connected? So I came back. Uh, so I went over. I went across the street for five years. Talked about not being a good fit, wasn't a good fit for me. No stories told, no names mentioned, not a good fit for me. And I called these guys and I said, and there's all five of them, Mike's not here anymore, but all five of you guys, whoever you were, uh, McCann, Onesti, maybe yeah. you were there. I said, I just want to come home 
Yeah. And they said, what do you want? What do you want? I said, I just want to come home. You can give me a box of business cards. <laughs> but in that time was also all this other stuff percolating. You know, the surgeries, my daughters, all sorts of stuff. And that was in a Burmar office. <clears throat> that was when you were open here. I went across the street for five yeah. minutes and I was not suited for that. I'm not. But you worked at the Bryn Mawr office. Forever. For 16 years. If and anybody ever a, knows that one. The, uh, the I, know that yeah, yeah. I know where those bodies are buried. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which office? Which office? So yeah. Kelly Williams was in Bryn Mawr at 720 West Lancaster Avenue. I have no sense of direction. Oh, so right, right across from Staples. Yeah, yeah. Right, right across from where I was at Berkshire Bryn Mawr. Right. That's right. 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 Yes. Right. So, that's Walgreens right. has that whole building piece or that whole building count. So you were there for 17 years? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And then we bought it. And Got it. Three days after coronavirus, got a phone call from this guy in Lake and saying, hey, we're going to buy a brokerage. So you crazy? Yeah. The world's coming to the end. Okay. I'm just joking. But that, like, that was really awful for us. It was yeah. uh, not in the best condition at the time. It was so, it could have been so successful. And as a team leader, I knew what my job was. I wasn't a team leader the whole time. There, you know, there's a story there, but it doesn't matter. Most yeah. team leaders only make it about 24 months. Two years is the average. That's right. Talked That's about right. Today. Tons of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm not I did. Eleven years. Yeah, I know. I mean, most people don't make it past two. We're just talking yeah. about ten. Two years. Yeah. Two years. So I came here, but then with all this other stuff that never ended, you know, COVID surgeries and more surgeries and more surgeries i haven't been visible and my sales stunk i wasn't me i wasn't me what happened so i'll tell you what didn't happen okay i'm not into technology i'm old school man i am i write notes i write notes i um I'm a really good communicator. I do, I talk to people. I will tell you one thing that I want to make sure to say that um, my cells were in the toilet. They weren't in the toilet this year. So I have to like do even better next year. But the one thing, the observation I want to share with you is that of all my sales, two of them, take them out of the crowd for a second. All of them are past clients, every last one. Some of which I never stayed in touch with. I get a phone call from London, we're moving back. I had sold their house, a couple houses actually, list and sale, list and sale. They went away for a while, we're coming back. And that was the big one of Ron. They're all past clients. So over 20 years, because that's what it's been, like all but two, and those last two were referred by past clients. So here I was in my, you know, weight of the world, like many of us go through, weight of the world. And there was some motivation, no top technology, but I'm sincere. You see here who I am, this is me. And maybe a little divine intervention. And I'm not a religious person, but let me tell you, Sometimes I just heard somebody like pick me up and move me off my ever widening butt. <laughs> and they were all past clients. It's interesting you say, if you ask me of those seven plus thousand people I meet, very seldom do I meet a person that's that technical savvy. And the majority of the time, 90% of the time, it's face to face conversations, it's open houses, it's appreciation events. It's people just randomly calling you back, but it's being a good human. It's the technology is an added thing to those people, like once they get to a certain level. But it's funny how people thought they recommend not to change name drop and thought they were going to replace us. So people I want the human. That, you did a good job of it over the years. People. Uh, I, I mean, that's I, what they think about. I, I they think, called you, and they're not there. It's not your job. They called you back because you did such an amazing job. And you didn't even reach out, and they still called you back, which you we would coach to reach out, right? Yeah. Some of us do, some of us don't, right? 33 times. Yeah, 33 I know times. 30, 30 but they reach out to you. you'll ever know. No, just yeah, but here, here's the thing like, overall, my time is it's 
18 years at Keller Williams. 33 touch. I've been to every event six, seven, eight times, all of them, a million times. And everything that's been preached to me, like at some point in time, I did a little bit of it. Yep. And then so like a did. little bit more. Yep. So every so often, like this morning, I get this message on my phone that says so and so is look is look, look who looked at you right now or look who's requesting information. I have not updated that since you were in short pants. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I need to do that. I'm not recommending, God forbid, what I do. A site, a web website. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they just show up on my phone like so it's, it's that deep. Why like a camera is there. And I'm like, why do you think people, what did you do right to share with the group that people call you back? I'm, I am very sincere. And if I tell you I'm going to do it, there, I do it. Like two. two. Tell, me, tell me about your work ethic. Like, uh... yeah, there's, I don't stop. You know, I don't stop. I think if you are born with, from a very large family, Italian Irish Catholic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, one in nine kids in the Bronx, which was actually a wonderful place. It's not that movie. But we did not have many things, except we had a great family. We really had a great family. And nine kids may sound like bizarre, but if any of you have any gray hair, you know there were. That was sort of normal at the time. How many right? people shared a bedroom? Oh, we got, that's a great right. question. Wait, Tony Pat and Mary were in one. John, Eileen, and Diane were in one, and John was separated by a shower curtain. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were always the babies. So Peggy, Kathy, and Jim. And, and my parents. So three bedrooms, one bath, long line. I now own. A house. Okay. We own houses. So when you when you it, it's it's emotional when you think about that, right? Like my, every day of my life. Yeah, my dad came in this week and my mother and my we were talking, they live in a farmhouse with one and a half baths, and we were talking about it. And uh, updating it. One of the things he said to me is, so "What am I going to update?" Well, I forgot my word. I was about to get you while you're at work. No, I'm so glad I told this before. Let's set it. Hey, forgot. Cool. We got to work on this. Yeah. <laughs> it's emotional. My dad was talking about this weekend with us. Is like, I'm doing some house, which he thinks is pretty dumb. And uh, he's right. He's right. wrong. He's right. Good like, change. But it's an emotional thing about those things that we had as a youth through where you went today, right? And what, 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 what do you think made you who you are? Like, you, you, you know, you had all those- The person. work ethic of my father, the inattentiveness of my mother. So I am highly attentive to my family. What's your dad do? Your he passed many years ago. Okay. He was in the federal government. Okay. How about he was mom? a treasury guy, whatever. Uh, she's a housewife, yep. you know, back in that day, yep. even more. Yep. Yeah, even more. And we span everything. I have a sister who's a PhD and another one in recovery. So, you know, the whole gamut. Yep. You know, I used to think that was very different. Now I found out it's not. We all carry that burden, or, and we can lift that burden. And I have for many of them. What do you mean by that? I've helped a lot. I help a lot. Yeah. I help a lot. Huh. I'm not going to. I think that's what it is. If I, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> if I have been lucky enough, this is hard. Yeah. I'm going to share it. I'm just going to do that. Good. So if I send my sister another check, yeah. I, I release that. Yeah. I release that. I don't, you, you know, I. You don't feel this like you mean? I release it. I don't, I, it's a gift. Got I don't look for it back. Yep. I don't look for more than a, a thank you. Have you always been that way? Or sometimes you focus on the negative stuff? I've been holding, no, no, I don't, I, I know. I'm, I'm Pollyanna. 
I am. Do it. If you're, you're good, you don't focus on anything. Well, no. I mean, I have my own trauma. Yeah, it's yeah. Quite, I mean that, but I never, I don't hold anyone responsible for my actions, and I'm willing to share. I am willing to share. You need a hand? But here's where I draw the line. I draw the line if someone is unethical. I am another person. Do you hear the words I'm not saying? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Yeah, but that's also the reason why you've done a lot of business because people know that anybody's in the audience goes right. that way. But you're above and beyond. Like you guys are above and beyond. People remember that. If I only sell one more house, it will be tied off with a bow. But I won't just sell one more house. I love, I didn't see your ad for my thing until today. Yeah. I don't, I purposely don't look. You didn't see the billboard? <laughs> I saw CNBC outside. Yeah. Um, I don't look at that, but when I saw the percent increase over last year, where you might think it says, well, look at that. I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a, I'm so failed in the previous year. But I know that I, I'm not failing, I'm doing fine. Yep. My, I value, I measure my success on a completely different level than I was when I was younger. I know my skills, I know who I, know who I am. Who's your competition? No, uh, me. I love it. No. Right. Are you always that way? No. <laughs> when I was at, uh, right, any name any of the above, I was I was envious and jealous. She was prettier and taller, and she got the thing, and I didn't. But I could write. That yep. nobody could ever take that from me. I mean, I knew what I was doing. But yeah, sure, I was jealous, but not anymore. It's like, you go, girl, you go. It's a whole different world. I don't know. What it's do you think? Great do you think it's, on this side do you think of the mountain. Experience? Do you think it's something we got beat up in life? Did we switch that? I got caught up in that. I left Coal Banker. I started an investment company and I was trying to chase these other guys and they have tattoos down their sleeves and nothing wrong with tattoos, but I'm not a tattoo guy. And then next thing, I'm trying to do this and trying to do that. My wife looks at me one day. She goes, who are you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm Jeremy. She's like, you, your competition's not yourself anymore. You're trying to be other people, you're trying to buy all these houses. Like, what, what? That was my change point. Like, the fear. I'm going to go back again, Jeremy. Again. What was yours? <clears throat> the biggest influence, I'm going to answer a little bit differently, was my husband. Is my husband. Did anything he say or just you saw or what? He's the nicest person I know. He's the kindest man I know. <laughs> Like shaking, yep. he is a pain in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure he gets his recording. No, I told him not to his good, face. Good. <laughs> it's a good marriage. Gotta be honest. Men, cover your ears. Men are such babies. Yeah. We go through yeah. childbirth. Uh -huh. My mother was pregnant 99 months of her life. <laughs> There's nine babies. Actually, she had 11, but you know, two unfortunately passed. We go through that. He has a few surgeries. Oh, God. <laughs> but I had to give it to him because he's kind and he's generous in spirit. Yeah. And that's my You ask the dentist when it's like you work with a man or a woman. They laugh. They say the bigger the man, the bigger the win. And as she's saying that, I have earphones in, sunglasses on. I <laughs> can't look at them. <laughs> My husband was 6'3", so he fits that mold. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, um, I don't even know if I have any regrets. I, COVID time. What the COVID teach uh, you? Uh, good things and bad things. I mean, I was a lump on a lot. Did you miss people? Oh my God, I miss people so much. That's why please move me up on the list for an office here. <laughs> because I'm either going to shoot my husband. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you yeah. No, I might. You'll never know that. Uh, I got Jeremy, wants to share. Jeremy wants to share. With you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, that'll cost her. <laughs> that'll cost Nicole's like, yes, that's off my plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll work with you, but I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Alyssa said the same thing. Oh, 
Look, I'll hang on. I'm just here. Wow. So, what would you give someone? What, what do you What do you think? What do you think the real estate market's going to go? You've been doing so well, like I have. Yeah. What do you think? We're going to lose a lot of people. You mean agents? Yes. Pardon me. I didn't mean. <laughs> uh, newer agents are going to fade away. Agents who have been in the business a long time may say, I'm done. Um, and I think we will steady the boat. It's always local, it always will be. The hot, hot, hot places, you know, OC or S Selling Sunset or mm -hmm. any of those places, those are anomalies. But they do factor in. That's what people gravitate to. They want to see squirrel. You know, they yeah. they want. For example, yeah. We live in a real life. Yeah. We live in. Take a breath. This is what got me off my backside when, after COVID, during COVID. Take a breath. One thing at a time. Yeah. One thing at a time. But keep technology at the bottom of the list. I agree with you. Um, and just make that first phone call. Back when I was a team leader, we used to talk about maybe maybe so now how a phone weighs fifty thousand pounds. Well, now you can just use earbuds. It doesn't weigh anything. Yeah. And to pick up that phone, not tech, not always do whatever you want with the thirty degree touch. Blah 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 blah. But make that step one little thing, just one little baby thing. And if that's all you can do in a day, love it. Embrace it, own it. That will lead to another day when you do something more. And it will pay out. Yep. So. Let's add to that. If you guys call someone, what other options have to listen to today? Options? The news? Oh, oh, oh. You know, the world coming to an end? Oh, yeah. Mortgage rates raising? What's their other option they have? You guys are positive people. Your friends deserve that you call. I mean, people just, I started doing birthday messages. I sent you guys emails before now and these videos. And the messages get back from somebody said, like, thanks a million for reaching out. Like, separately than Facebook, separately than social media. Just send a person a text with a video on it and be like, yo, they can get to that. So I don't do that. I don't like it. I don't like your videos. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Love it. Reference the pushy broad. Yep. I'm tired of doing things that don't feel natural to yep. me. You do what you do. So you do what you do. Yep. You be you. I'll, I'll be, be you. you. Exactly. I'm going to write you a note. And you're going to call me because I owe you a handwritten note. <laughs> it is a pain in the neck. But I I still stop at the post office. Even in Havertown where all the mailboxes are being robbed by thieves from right. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Really? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. It's like Round this. Here. So I watch. take them to watch the post yes. office inside the lobby, but I write notes. I've got boxes and boxes of note cards and sheets of pretty stamps. None of this USA Pulse stuff. I always get a phone call back. Diane, thank you. Now it's a sincere note. I'm not asking for yes. anything. I'm just saying, hey, yeah. happy birthday. Thought of you. Love you. Miss you. You know. So if someone sends you a thank you card, I have a I have a lamp yeah, a above card. my desk, and they're all clipped with little like uh, pin clips or whatever around my lamp, so that I'm sitting at this stupid computer doing stuff I hate, and I do. I hate the. I wanna. I can see my thank you notes, and they're all from people to whom I wrote a note. You know, let's get together for lunch. So in the month of October, so far, I have five or six, you know, lunch or dinner dates from people I hadn't connected with for a while, but all of whom I sent a note to. This is gold. Is there anybody writing right now that says, this has been going on for years, right? You know we, we get away from it. Yes, but we get away from it. On average, watch this. It's a group. Who's writing thank you cards or messages to people? Good. So you're good. So wow, there you go. go. It's a good group. Okay. Now and you don't even have gray hair. And <laughs> yeah. how do you guys feel when you get one? Love good. It. Right? Great. Feels good, right? People. Right? And how many do you get on average? Thank you. Yep. This is the difference. You just drop us so so powerful. When you get emails, right? How many emails do you guys get a day? Raise your hand above 50. Above 100? Right? How many thank you cards anybody get above two? 
two or three. Years. That's yeah. So just it's you're, you're in front of your people. I have forty five thousand emails in my yeah. laptop. I I unsubscribed and I'm convinced they're just confirming the email address. I don't know how to get rid of them, but I will. I pick out a little bookmark. I think you call it. You know who who do I want to hear from? Who do I want to? Hear from? So I checked on you. You know you do your little thing every so often. I'll check for McCann. I'll check for a new listing, something we should talk about, Chris. Let's talk about it. We need to, such a question. <laughs> we need to have a collective of what the new listings are and what the sales are in one platform. And if we have it, I don't see it. And that bothers me. Okay. So I demand it. Okay. <laughs> Send me a solution, what you think it'd be, and we'll talk about it. I'll write it. Oh, good. Well, okay. and, uh, no, seriously, it's good. I mean, Tuesday training today was really from an education from someone giving me a heads up. I love that you give me that feedback that we could try to make it better. And do it. It's awesome. You know, here, here I'm saying all these smart alecky style, no. but the truth is, I love what we do. Oh, yeah. We are paid an enormous amount of money for doing something that really comes naturally to us to talk to somebody. We are humans, we are social animals. We're supposed to talk and connect with people, right? No, we're not supposed to be locked in a little box. Yep. And we're never going to be 100%. I don't care about AI and, and what the space with this new robots coming out by 2025. Like, don't let that take control of your life. Don't let computers <clears throat> take over real estate. This is still a person to person business. That's all. That's all. I was able to give my daughter, who got married a month ago, an extraordinary wedding. I couldn't flip and believe it. I gave her the money. She did all the planning. She, she'd be a great producer, producer for TV or movies. I told her that. She's like, I'm never going to do this again. And I did that from what I earned this year. I'm I'm a little poor kid from the Bronx. <clears throat> this is nothing that I'm used to. And it's 20 years and I never, I'll never get used to it. So I have an exit plan. What is it? I'm just gonna ask you. <clears throat> I need water. You're gonna share an office with Jeremy? Right, yeah. You can have a bottle yet. Thank you so much. Um, so you can sell real estate for the rest of your life. But in 10 years from now, I will be 79 years old. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Oh, you are so kind. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But I might. Maybe I'll be, thank you so much. Um, maybe I'll be referring more. Where would you move to? You know exactly. <laughs> no, Back I'm, to the Bronx. We have a lovely beach house in uh, Town Bank, North Cape May, yep. and I would love to do that. My husband won't. He, he's concerned about medical stuff. He wants pen in Cape May. They're going to be down there soon. We tell well, them. I'm going to force them because I have a few phone calls in already. <laughs> Jeff, what are you going to Jeff's already coming down into the um, buying little hospital. So, but, you know, at least Jeff, I mean, Jefferson's as good as pen. The one um, Cape Memorial. They call Cape Fear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, Where's that one at? I don't know. <laughs> nice. Over there somewhere. Um, so we have a place in Cape May or on the Bay side. I want to be there. We'll see how cool when is that negotiation. Cool. Yeah, in ground. Two blocks from the Bay. Spot. Wonderful. Anybody in North Cape May here? Trying. Cape May? Cape May? Trying. Cape May? Well, I'd find you a parking Say again, why with harpoons? Many days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The town is called Town Bank. It's next to the Villas. The Villas is like the Bronx used to be. The Bronx is now hot, actually. Um, the Villas was all the, were all these, what they call them um, Millmans. One or two bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, that's it. Right, mm -hmm. the Fishman Shacks. Um, I want to see who sold all the chain link fences. They made a lot of money. I can't wait to get rid of mine. <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of chain link fence where I grew up was the same way. But Dennisville is fence. the name of mine. That's the so you at Dennisville, if you go to the back route through 55. Right. That's, that's where that way. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Dennisville right there. Yeah. 
Um, in that area to start a farm too. Villas now, they've gone from like Overbrook rate of back in the day, 65,000, less than 100,000. All of a sudden they're $300,000 that's going to be torn down and build a, a mega mega, you know, beach house, which I think is right. terrible. That's you and I talk about today, I like I improved, I like the improvement on my value for sure. A house just sold two doors for me. For over asking, that's what you, I called her yesterday. It was listed at 850 and sold for over asking. And it's very similar to my house. We don't pay anything like that. Trust me. Yep. Trust me. Town Bank, Villas, Cape May Beach. There's Cape May Beach before that. Right. That area is still hot and that price point right now. Cape May Beach is almost too hot to buy it. It's the villas that you can get in if you hurry. There's someone here, uh, not in the office, but Lori Rupert lives there too. Does she really? Yep, Lori just hands up her sister was gonna sell houses. So I rented the circle house right on the beach here during Corona. Remember that in Corona when you couldn't like rent in certain areas? Remember it was restrictions, like for 40, you could go to Florida for a little bit and you couldn't. Then Jersey said you could go and then they said, no, you can't. So I'd go to Maryland, I lived in Maryland on the water. And then we went back to Jersey, said, you guys remember this? It's yeah, we got letters from um, that to, to let the Wildwood Crest administration know when we were coming down because we had PA fleet. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So back to my exit plan. Yep. So, well, I'm finally going to do it. Get my license in Jersey. All right. Why not? <laughs> I um, took the test five, six years ago. I they scheduled me two days after. I said, okay, you know, I signed up. I said, oh, I can't do it in two days. I have to study. They said, well, that's your date. I missed the damn thing by two points with no study. And you can't pass an exam without studying. So it's not for me to do that. So, yeah, so exit plan, hmm, I don't know, but I'm looking at the different models to exit out of real estate. You know, selling my list I have Almost as many names as you do on your list, Mike. You're not going anywhere, babe. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to go Come on, man. Because we love it. But there'll be more down there. I love it. Uh, it's funny. I, I think my flying surfboard at Town Bank, whatever it is. This year, really? Is somebody, beautiful spot. Great view. Um, sure thing. We're all having interest at Sure. And that's a great spot. For you. So, not going anywhere. So. You can dream it, and that's okay. <laughs> so that's thank you. I love that. Yeah. I want one more home in my. And you need to be around people, right? I'm sorry. How long was everybody doing COVID? Yeah. Compared to being around people, right? Don't you feel better when you're around people? I, I really, I, I said to someone when I came in this, when I arrived this morning, it's always the first two minutes when I've spoken with large, large groups before. It's always the first two minutes that I'm nervous and calm down. It may have been the first ten minutes this time around. You are a pushy girl. Um, <laughs> the, the truth is, I don't think, I disagree with my husband as an example. He did 40 years at Strathaven, teaching AP computer programming and math, smart as, as a whip. And now he plays golf. He's gotten back to playing golf after his surgeries. And I don't want that life. I don't want that life where I'm just sitting there. He can be bored. I get bored very quickly. Yeah, I'm bored with this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap up. Speaking of that, number one, what, what questions do you guys have? What was a key takeaway? Either one. I have an old question. So when you started your ad agency out of your home set, what was it called? Who did you sell to? What was what? What was it called? Who did you sell to? It was called it? Nelson and Company, which is my birth name. I still use it. And I sold the data. That's what I sold. I sold the client names. The scanners and all that, that was of no value. It was the database. So as I look at my exit, if yeah. I were to ever exit, it's my database. Who else? Matt, yeah, give me a key takeaway. Um, I think just the way you treated your clients, like like you said, it's a people business. Um, obviously, like the agents I hear from the, I don't know if they're worried about Zillow or Open Door or anything like that. Like that doesn't even cross my mind because I buy a lot of real estate myself. So like <clears throat> I'm the same way. Like I want to work with lenders who provide a great client service. Right. 
who are knowledgeable. Like if I want to buy an Airbnb, they're doing Airbnb. So I want their knowledge instead of like their interest rate or whatever. So it's all, all like relationship based, like you said, and that's not going to go away. Anybody else? She's very humble. In our town, there was a huge fire with people that were misplaced and they went to her house. And not many people would do that. And she didn't, that is, that's not because she's a realtor and wants her business. That's just the way she is. I didn't know you knew about that. Um, Havertown's a small town. <laughs> um, so it's not just the way you talk to your clients, the way you treat your clients, it's also the way you treat other agents. Yep. You, I had buyers you were worried about and you came and met me. I don't know if you remember this, I remember. but um, they did finally find a house. Um, you know, so it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's treating your other, you know, your coworkers, your co-op, you know, and I'm not, I mean, I'm the person to admit, I'm not always nice. I, if I think you're stupid, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? um, but you are too humble. You're not just nice to your clients. You're, you're just nice. a nice person. Okay. So. Well, yeah. um, I like the you do you and I'll do me. Yeah. Of thing, <laughs> right? Like, you know, Jeremy, you love your videos and the emails, but that doesn't feel comfortable for you. So. And there's things that would feel comfortable for me that wouldn't be for you too. So, and people can tell when you're uncomfortable with something. Yeah, yeah or when you're, so. yeah. So it's just what works for you is. Healthy you know, choice options, yeah. you pick what works for you. Mm -hmm. Michael. So, uh, and I know it's a relationship business for you. And then I know during COVID you had some struggles, but to me, I just come back and take care of your husband and just. Yeah. Started all those relationships with them that had a great business. And um and, and I knew that when I first met you, just that how important your clients were to just your relationship with you. Um so authenticity, you know, and I'm not worried about all this other outside stuff. I'm gonna, you know, be, be maybe brutally honest, which is great. And, and uh so anyway, so I'm, all, I'm not even asking the question of the same. I respect you so much. I, I really give you some of the credit for helping me grow. And I'm not a kiss ass. I <laughs> 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 but after that tumult of losing brainwater, I remember back in the 80s, an old boss of mine, Richard Morris at Shadow Trap, said to me, you take your business so personally. I don't understand that. That's me. And I said to him, I, of course I do. That's right. You, you've been so supportive of me during these times. Like, we know each other, we don't know each other. We know each other, what are you going to do? You've been very supportive, and that makes that easier for all of us. Because I'm more than ready to come back. So as I said, we have to top the list for your goddamn all this. <laughs> um, but I have to, you know, we none of us do it alone. We may be alone in our moment in our home office, but we're not doing it alone. I don't think. And if you are alone, please reach out. And you feel things you're not getting, reach out. You can see this is the culture's type of people. They're not just full of crap. I could tell you more about the culture than you'll ever know. All right, so let's wrap this up. We'll go get your new office with me. You may. <laughs> <laughs> and, no,